Actually, I'm the only female interventionist in the faculty here. Now that's a very interesting point because here we are in the 21st century. How is it that you're the only woman on the faculty? Why? We just realized that uh, there are there could be many factors. Uh, saying that medical doctors uh, in last uh, 20 years, we believe that we have more male dominant. So from that medical student to residency to fellowship, it's automatically become male dominant. But it changed in the last kind of five years that medical students shift more to female and we hope that that medical student group in 10 years time will be coming more interventional neuroradiologists finally. For example, if you look at the percentage of the female membership in the WFITN, which I work for 15 years, there are only 6%. I'm now past president and then during my presidency uh, last year, uh, we look at the numbers and it's, that's only 6%. And uh, that, that's come to the issue that we, we actually in last year meeting, we discussed a lot how to improve this, how to uh, pursue or initiate more to the female doctor to come to this world. You know, because actually I think it's, it's a very stressful work. It takes time, you need to be on call, but however, we have a kind of lady's hand. And it's, it's a pity that we, we, uh, we are not enough, especially when the stroke, the acuishmic stroke comes and uh, we need more and more neurointerventionists. So do you have any practical suggestions? What are you trying to do to increase women participation? What do you think needs to be done? I think the first part is a role model. We need to show that the interventional radiologists at my age or slightly above below, we can have the regular family life. That's the first thing that we need to show. We can separate the time and becoming good in our profession. The equality should be enhanced through all the government. There are some discrimination in some country in Asia. That's, that's every meeting we were trying to enforce the way that we can show the potency or the potential uh, capacity of women in the field. So that's, that's uh, the idea. For example, next year we work with uh, WFITN 2019 event the president, there are two, uh, two presidents there, one male and one female, that we may try to uh, make sure that invited moderator of the, each session, we have significantly good female neurointerventionists. At least this is the kind of things to promote them more. You see more women coming into your fel as fellows and more women interested in the field. Right now, in Asia, it's still less than 10% of each year fellowship entrance becoming female. But at least it's, it's good that we, we expose some uh, Japanese, some Korean female interventional neuroradiologists because in some society like in Japan, you have three to 4,000 male neurosurgeon and many of them becoming neurointerventionists. So there are very slim space for women there. But right now, this year, I thought we have only starting few female neurointerventionists there, same as uh, some in uh, Korea. All of our educational course, I can say that because we start uh, a basic educational course since year 2000. And that kind of educational course, we uh, combine with this kind of life course or link course that will become the phase two. We very open for both female and male to entrance. Actually, myself, I personally would consider the female application if we can help them to, to, to learn to study more.
I'm saying that radiation and pregnancy is something that we already know for a long time, that very high dose of radiation may make you unable to, to have uh, the child, but usually uh, the radiation dose now that we are using in interventional field are highly protected so that you can have same chance of uh, uh, becoming pregnant. But the problem is that when you start to realize that you are pregnant, you need to leave from the uh, ex direct exposure. Right. That means you still can have the work like OPD follow-up which is to keep you in touch with all the disease and the experience in the field. And after nine months, when you deliver a baby, maybe you try to look for the help of assistant, either the family or the babysitter. Six months, you should be able to come back and start to expose again the, the real interventional neuroradiology cases. By that time, maybe it's a good idea for all the center institute to give chance for them to rehearse the, what they miss in a year they leave. Because, you know, technology uh, rapidly developed. Look at the link course here compared to 2017 last year. There are many more new things coming up and uh, if you just leave for one year, it's not easy to catch up. And, it will be good to give two or three months opportunity for all of these women coming back and becoming able to catch up with all the new technology. One, one interesting thing, of course, is the new technology also allows for these, um, you're able to do cases on models. So even a, a, a woman who stayed home to take care of her children can probably start training with the new technology through model that, that's, that is part of the PPP or uh, what we try to collaborate with all the in industries because they are willing to help us by promoting a simulator or the 3D printing stuff so that we can be able to give the chance to this group of people who need to leave for one year to, to catch up with the new technology. And that is also not only in this kind of big meeting, but maybe there could be added into many countries that the woman minority problem exists. So it yes. will be very this helpful. This is very good. So technology can both advance as quickly, but could also help you keep up with the advances. Yes. So any last remarks on what women should be looking for in interventional neuroradiology? Yeah, if, if I could uh, use this uh, online channel to, to tell them that uh, I'm sure that we women, we have our real capacity.